Peace, forever, and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple. Just being a little casual today. And uh, I am going to just speak on this particular subject for about 15 minutes. So please bear with me. And uh, on this visit, let ye get busy. <laughs> okay. I would like to send this message out to the so-called good white people, the nice white people, the non-racist white people, the Caucasian people that claim they do not hate black folks. I do, I do not need to speak to Caucasian people or anybody that outright tells me, look Negro, I don't like you. I hate black people. I don't like Kurds. I don't like niggers. I don't like ya. So there's, you know in a way that's good because I understand exactly where that person is coming from. That person understands exactly where I'm coming from I've really had no problem with white people that say or claim they hate black folks because we're coming from an open and honest place and the dialogue is fresh and clean and everybody knows exactly where everybody stands. However, there is a group of Caucasian people that make counterclaim that they like or they can even love black folks they love all of humanity i'm not a, a white racist everybody should be equal so on and so on so this message goes out to those type of caucasians who may indeed be fake and i want to talk about fake white folks in just a second in fact, right now, I want to begin our talk. Now listen very carefully, white man and white woman of America and around the world. I want, to, I want you to listen to a black man. Let me give you some advice. Let me tell you what you are up against trying to be good, trying to claim, make these claims that you are not a racist and you have no problems and you want everybody to do good and blase, blase. In religion, God does not accept just anybody to be a messenger or a prophet. He does not just grab anybody off the street. This God, and we should take and should watch the activity of this God, maybe we can learn some lessons. This God takes a person he chooses to be a prophet or a messenger and they are not just embraced by God but they are tested to see if they qualify to be God's prophet to be God's messenger to represent the God so Abraham I believe the son was Isaac Abraham was tested and his son Isaac was chosen to be a sacrifice to show this God that I am loyal and dedicated to you Lord and Isaac who also loved this God knowing that he would be sacrificed so they could prove that they were loyal and dedicated to this God. The son said, I don't mind dying so that we can show God that we are one with him. So Abraham took a knife and was taking his son up on the mount to slice his throat and sacrifice his son, his flesh and blood to this God. That's a test. So 
So here you are, goody to shoe, white people. You claim that you're not racist, but you don't expect to be tested by black folks. And you should be tested because you come, you are the children that come from a people that involve itself legally and made legal the practice of Jim Crow the practice of slavery for hundreds and hundreds of years and you have allowed the killers your white brothers and sisters to lynch us castrate us rape us and do to us all types of atrocity and you sit on your ass and did nothing and now it's 2011 and for some reason just because you smile just because you say you're not this just because you say you're not that we are supposed to sit back and just assume, oh wow, things have changed because they gave me affirmative action. Oh, they are different because they gave me some food steps. Oh, they different because my brother married to a white woman. Oh, they different. Oh, they different. Oh, or are you like your fathers? And the only way we're going to know if you are or not like your fathers we have to test you. So, one of the tests is the sacrifice of your son. How many white people have you exposed? How many other, how many sons and daughters have you shown and exposed to show their evil, to show their wickedness, that you sacrifice yourself, your reputation, your job? being harassed to show black folks I'm not like them so I put these out on front street these are the wicked that's my mother but she's wicked she don't like you and she's the head of a large corporation and they don't hire blacks there are, don't you know there are many white businesses that don't have black employees and don't want them won't you Fall off, but you won't do that because it's difficult to fight against skin that looks like yours because we've been conditioned to be loyal where you have, you've been conditioned to be loyal to your race. You don't suffer self hatred like black folks do because we'll snitch and rat each other out so that the white man can be happy, hope that the white man will pat us on the head. Black folks do it all the time. Many Caucasian people come to my channel and they get extremely angry. They get extremely angry, but at the same time they talk about they're not racist. But when I reject their talk that they are not racist, that they are not like their fathers, then they get angry when they talk and try to explain themselves and I reject it and all their opinion and they can't defend themselves then they become angry and when you become angry the real you shows up no matter what your color is because when you get angry you lose it and the real person comes out if you love your mother, if you love your father, no matter how angry they make you, you will never say an ill word about them. You will always, no matter how angry you get, you will never call your mother a bitch. You will never disrespect your father. But see, if that's how you feel deep inside, there's something that they done that you didn't like or whatever, deep inside and you've been harboring that for years or whatever anger will bring it out so when I made a ban telling many Caucasian people I don't want you on my page no more you're troublemakers and whatever etc 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 many Caucasian people who said they were my friend. They had me on their friend list 
and they socialize with me silver and courteous. But when I made that ban, I hereby order that white people will not be entertained in this ministry any longer. The real them came out. Do you believe I'm going to talk and socialize with you and not test you when I know historically that you are the children of liars and murderers and thieves and deceivers and manipulators and I'm not going to test you? You think I'm going to let you get close to me and socialize and interact with me and I'm not going to test you? So I tested my white subscribers, my Caucasian subscribers and friends and many of them failed because they have, they got angry and the anger caused them to reveal who they really were. Those who really are what they claim, they wrote me emails and said, Brother Talit, I understand exactly what you said and why you must do what you do. But I'll still be watching your videos because I enjoy what you say and I know exactly what you stand for. So my white subscribers, some of them that have been with me in this ministry for years, who know me and who are real and what they're talking about, they are still here. But the rats and the fakes, they're gone. They go to the wind because I tested them and made them angry. They failed the test. And I am so happy that they are gone. So you don't understand, I'm not about race at all. I'm about freedom, justice, and equality for everybody. But you got to call a spade a spade. You have to talk real truth. And my white subscribers understand and know what I have to do. So they are still here. My subscription didn't hardly go anywhere. So that should tell you something. The Reality's Temple Ministry embraces red people, black, Caucasian, all of humanity. We want freedom and justice and equality for everybody. But you got to describe the wicked. You got to tell it like it is. And if it's a black man that's doing evil, you got to say it. If it's a white man that's doing wickedness, you got to say it. I have exposed these covert races. And then, to bring this little talk to conclusion, go to these so-called non-racist channels. I, I have nothing against black people. Make them white folks angry. Make them mad. See how they talk to you. You're a porch monkey and you're a welfare recipient, they start calling you all kinds of names because see you made them angry and the real racist that's in them came out. You don't fool me. I know what it takes. It takes the test. So remember y'all, you have to test everybody. You have to test me. When you get married to a wife or a husband, you have to test them to see if they're worthy of your love. Most of these suckers don't fail. Make them angry. Test them. Take them by surprise. And then you'll see exactly what you have and what you got. This is your brother Talit Even Raw. We have exposed many of these fake Caucasian people. Don't bring your, that madness to me. You don't fool me at all. But you can enjoy socializing with other fakers just like you the Uncle Toms and the other dark Europeans but you're not going to pull that off here thank you for listening let's talk about it drop down your comments I'll open this up so some white folks can talk to because they need to defend themselves if necessary this world it is the reality is temple on earth Woo! it's hot in here but I'm not taking off my clothes. Okay. 
Welcome back. Welcome back. Oh, man. Just being a little casual. This is the Realities Tip on Earth. I am the mighty angel snub number seven. And remember, you are just as mighty as I am. So, <laughs> and you know, well, I don't have a lot of power, but it's good to think that you do. <laughs> oh, but uh, you just don't know how mighty you are if we stop all this feuding and fighting, backbiting, and try to, for just a short period of time, work with one another so you can see the power and the might, and then perhaps the backbiting, the jealousy and the envy, all these different things that plague us, it, won't, it might not be as uh, a problem as you may think when you see how wonderful in your might you and I actually are. So this led me to think about how many of us we view Uncle Tom. We view so-called sellers. I don't like using that word Uncle Tom. I don't like calling our people a seller because we're not walking in their shoes. We don't we don't have their experience. Now I will tell you this. You can become abused. We are an abused people. We have been living in America for over 400 years and we have been exploited and abused. And in a lot of cases, you can fall in love with those who exploit and abuse you. And this is a sickness. So how can you blame somebody and how can you hate somebody because you hate the Uncle Tom. You hate the dark Europeans. You don't like these sellouts. But these are our people that were born and conditioned into sickness. And just a few days ago, while you are self-righteous and high and mighty, just a few days ago, you was acting and behaving just like them because you didn't know any better. But now that you think, you think that you know better, you want to judge other people. I don't want to be accused of judging folks. I don't want to be accused of calling people names they don't deserve. Because I don't walk in their footsteps. And if I care about you, if I love black folks, then I must understand that we are sick. How can you get angry at somebody with the measles? Somebody with the chicken pox? Somebody with any kind of disease or sickness? It's not like they went out and tried to get it on purpose. We, do you really believe that our people we call Uncle Tom, Judas is in Benedict Arnold's or whatever, cracker lovers, whatever you want to call them, do you really, really believe that's the way they want to be? They are sick. And sometimes you get sick, you don't even know. You can run around with cancer for years. And you'll never know that you have that sickness. I want to say this about integration. Integration, with no doubt, was one of the worst things that could have happened to the black community. Many of you think that integration was about trying to sleep with white folks. Trying to love getting to bed with them. That's not what integration was about. That's not what Martin Luther King and all those brothers and sisters, that's not what they died and, died and bled for and sacrificed for. You don't hear nowhere in Martin Luther King's speech, and y'all want to make mockery of him and call him an Uncle Tom. There's nowhere where he talked about, oh, 
I just want to get in the bed with a white woman. Integration in their minds was nothing but a fight for equality. And integration was nothing but symbolism and wanting equality. Here we are, living in America, black people are American citizens. We have fought in every war in this nation since the Revolutionary War. We pay our taxes. The black man and woman are the best citizens this nation has ever had. But yet, you take our life, you take our money, but then when brothers and sisters get on a bus, you have to go to the back of the bus. You have to suffer humiliation. That's what the fight was about. It was not a fight about getting in some white woman's panties. But of course, with integration, and you get close to them, just like you get close to your dog and your dog has fleas, then some of the fleas are going to jump on you. What man in his right state of mind would not want to be proud of his hotel? Not somebody else's hotel, somebody, your own hotel, your house. See, integration was about equality. But in getting that equality came a bad response and a bad outcome because many of our people, we are sick. So many of them, when they began to win and they was able to ride in the front of the bus, they were able to go to the white man's fine hotels. And all this, it went to their head. So now what they have ain't good enough. They have become sick. And then you and me, those of us who claim to be well, when you mistreat the sick, you make things worse. And when you are not an example of what you claim. Where are your hotels? Where is your farmland? Where are your schools? You're supposed to know better, but what do you have? The money in your pocket is the same money in their pocket. Where is your hotel? You don't have nothing, so you don't have room to talk. How you gonna call somebody Uncle Tom laying up at the Marriott? How you gonna call somebody Uncle Tom riding the bus, the white man's bus, just like they are? And you run in your mouth, arrogant, self-righteous, judgmental. You can talk about somebody, but you ain't doing no damn better. Except you can holler. Kill the cracker. Kill the white man. And all those silly stuff. The way you kill the white man is by doing for yourself. Building your own school. Creating your own jobs. Farming your own land. Making your own international friends. You don't have to rely on what he does. If you want a relationship to Africa, make it. If you want to trade with Africa and start doing things with Africa or Japan or China or anybody, then do it. The reason why this oppressor, these racist Caucasians in power in America, treat us the way they do is because we don't see the value in ourselves. We continue, no matter how black power, no matter how many bean pies you sell, you're still in the same condition and you hate one another so bad that you can't unite your re and share your resources to 
get the job done. And he sees you in this pitiful condition. The white man is powerful. How can you call somebody an Uncle Tom? A Benedict Arnold? Our people fighting for integration was dealing with the people who was lynching them outright. Burst down your door and shoot you in the face. There was no legal consequences. They had a right to be afraid. They had a right to be scared. Y'all so-called black soldiers. You don't do nothing. And you won't do nothing because you know if you come up against this white man physically, he don't kick you in the ass. He has way more firepower than you'll ever get. And the real firepower that you got came from him. You don't make no guns. You don't make no bombs. You don't do a damn thing. Except run your sissified ass mouth. That's all y'all do. And I'm sick of it. Because you don't impress me. You behave like little children. Name calling. You don't have to threaten nobody. You don't have to tell nobody what you're going to do. Just do it. If I call somebody from this day on a day a name, then I better be doing better than they are so I can be an example of what I'm talking about. But y'all not no examples of what you're talking about. This white man is not nothing to play with. How many of our leaders have died because of either he killed them or he manipulated and caused us to kill our leaders. And you're still doing the same pathetic, pitiful thing. So I just want to say to all those in the civil rights movement, those who followed Martin Luther King, those who decided to uh, challenge this oppressor with non-violence. I don't have nothing against you because I understand. But after a certain period of time you need to understand that you have not won and you are dealing with a vicious enemy and you don't have to fight because this beast is not going to let you go without a fight. You got to be strong with him. You got to pick up a stick when you're dealing with a vicious beast, a rock or something. A beast, a savage animal, don't respond to beautiful words. And that's what we're dealing with. You have to love yourself enough to show the world and you and your babies and our women that whatever the white man got we can build and do just as good and better whatever they did in Egypt or whatever they did anywhere in other civilization we can do it and better then you can talk but until you produce we are a joke so laugh Ha 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 Cause that's all we are right now. We need to respect our elders regardless. Honor our elders because whatever they did, they made it so we could be here and be as comfortable as we are. Whatever they've done. And if you can do better, show it. Stop talking about it. Show them. Jump down your comments. And uh, let's rap about it. Till next time, peace out, y'all. Well, howdy, partner. 
You've made no mistake. This is, of course, the reality trip on earth, just being a little casual, just talking with us. And uh, on this particular topic, I just want to make a quick point, then go on about my business. So uh, please just get a little comfortable, put on your seatbelt, and go on this ride with me just for a few minutes. Can you hang? Yeah, you can hang. Let's talk about it. There is no doubt. For us, we who are born the descendants of slaves in America, there is no doubt that there is an element in the United States of America and around the world that since we live in America, we're going to talk about America. I'm not going to go to Zimbabwe. I'm not going to go to Haiti. I'm not going to go to Europe. I'm, gonna, I'm talking about right here in America our experience when people start talking about what's going on in Europe what's going on in Africa and all these different places that's a distraction talent to keep them from dealing with us who point the fingers at Caucasian people in this country that did evil to our ancestors and continue to mistreat us till this day. So they point, oh, but look what's happening in Africa. There's slavery in Africa. They doing this over here. They're, I'm talking about America and your American behind. Your racist white self. I didn't want to say <laughs> Woo! Sometimes you just get emotional and uh, you know, I'm from the hood too. But I want to portray and place before the public a much better image than being some ghetto lies Negro. And plus, that's not me anyway. The only reason why any type of profanity has ever entered my vocabulary was because I used to do uh, stand up comedy and imitate Eddie Murphy. <laughs> you know, Eddie. And uh, Eddie does a lot of cussing. So I got caught up in that, and it's still there, but that's just not me, never have been me. But this element of Caucasian people are our enemies, and they are racist. They created race. And to take the heat off of them, they want to try to call us racist because we stand up and complain and fight against the racism that they created. Ain't that a beat? <laughs> they are so slick. That's one of their tricks. I don't fall for that. Maybe some of these Uncle Tom dark European idiots, maybe they go for it. I don't G for that. Another thing, brothers and sisters, and anybody that's listening to the sound of my voice, something else we should not G for is the use of sound bites. Racist Caucasian people in the media, they use sound bites. And technically, sound bites are, su are supposed to be used in order to shorten down an event or the speech or dialogue between persons or something an individual is saying. Not to take away from that person's message. But of course, as you know, the racist Caucasian people, the racist Caucasian Jewish media, controlled media, Zionist controlled media and whomever because some of y'all blacks if you have a little newspaper or a little show you will do the same thing 
They use sound bites for their own purpose. These are people that claim to be honest, claim to be caring for other people, claim to be civil, but they take sound bites from those they don't like and twist and manipulate the sound bite to make it sound, make that person sound like what they accuse them of. So one of the most famous sound bites within recent times that I know of was when Louis Farrakhan was talking about Jews and they took the sound bite where Louis Farrakhan called Adolf Hitler wickedly great. He called him wickedly great when he was a great man. Not saying that he was great, a good guy, but he still was great. He, but he was wicked. But they took the sound bite and they took his words to twist it around to make the mass of the people who would listen to their radio or, their, or read their newspapers. They uh, twisted his uh, comment around to make it seem as though Louis Farrakhan supports Adolf Hitler and what Adolf Hitler done to uh, Jewish persons. Using sound bites for that purpose, that's wickedly great. And even on YouTube, there's no difference. I have videos of Caucasian people in some places on my channel and I take the whole video and download the whole video so you can see exactly the original video unedited and the original owner can vouch for it. I ain't changed nothing to let you listen before I respond to what this racist Caucasian is talking about. But when they deal with me, because they know they lie, when they call me a racist, when they call me a hater, and they call me a devil and a demon, all these those silly things that they come up with, they really don't use sound bites at all because I don't talk like that. But when they do, they try to take a sound bite to try to manipulate it and twist it to make me what they have lied to the people what I'm about. And they believe they should be seen as good. You are good. Good and evil. Good and wicked. Devil son. Devil daughter. That's what you are. Controlling a sound bite. Another example. When you use sound bites and you you don't uh, use the sound bite properly. You can take a sentence. It's just like messing up a sentence. Let's use this as an example. Angry dogs chase cat across the highway. Okay, now let's make a sound bite. Dog chase cat across the road. See? Road is not even in the sentence. But with a sound bite, you can twist it and manipulate it and flip it where it can be made to sound like something else. Then, angry dog. Angry dog chase cat across the highway. But if you take a word in and out and if you, and if you flip it around, because we could a, a kitten is a cat. We can take the cat out and put kitten. And I'm not deceiving you because a kitten is a cat, but that's not what I said. I said angry dog. Then you can change the word angry and put mad. Mad dog chase. But when you change things and see, that's what's wrong. That's what they always say is wrong with the Bible. The Bible is changed. It has been flipped and flopped, going from one hand to another. The most popular.
regular version of the Bible is the King James authorized version. Who gave King James authority to revise the Bible? And in the revelations of the very same Bible that King James and others have revised, it says, do not change. Revise means to change. Revise means we gonna make a sound black. We gonna make it the way we want it to be. But of course, that's a very difficult task, the Bible being as large as it is. Because if your if your mind is awakened to a certain point, you can see through the manipulation. If you no Louis Farrakhan or if you don't trust the media when they give you these sound bites you can look past the lie that they're trying to tell us and there's another thing when Caucasian people cannot use sound bites they can't manipulate your words then they want to play the dumb role like they don't understand what you're talking about what you, what, what you say? What you mean by that? Now, I, I don't understand. That don't make no sense. They play the dumb role when it suits their need. How can you be dumb? You have bachelor's degrees, MBAs, and all these high degrees of learning on your wall. Some of them claim they went to colleges and universities and they are scholars if you are scholars and you know so much then all of a sudden how can you play dumb they play dumb when it fits their purpose but again we must be careful about sound bites if you really want to know about somebody then go to the source talk to to the members of the nation of Islam. Talk to me. Like you're a human being. Not like you're some child. You're an idiot. Talk to me. Talk to them. And learn who we are. I have been studied by white people. For 10 years. Nobody has studied you. And these white people report, and I can prove it in the records. They don't show nowhere where I show anything racist. There's nowhere in the records to show that I hate anybody except them. <laughs> There's nowhere in the records that they wrote, not me saying that Tariq is a liar. Nowhere. There's no way in the records to show that Tariq disrespect women or anybody. But I'm going to stand up and I'm going to tell you my opinion. How I feel. There's no way in the records to show Tariq even Rob hurt anybody in his life. Nowhere. Now, you different. Because we know some of y'all out there, you're in bad shape. You can't talk about me. I have the state of Missouri and hundreds of people that studied me with degrees tell you what I'm about. But I'm going to be open and honest with you and you should be like that with me. And if you can't, take your happy ass on and make a video with your sound bites in it. And with me, are your sound bites working? Apparently not. Take your dumb ass on and play with the other little kids because I'm way out of your lead. Thank you for listening. Let's just talk about it. These deceivers, this was and is the reality is temple on earth. Ah. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the 
Realities Temple on Earth. Of course, I am the mighty Angel Snub Number Seven. Going to be a little casual. Got to uh, speak a little fast so I can make all my points within this limited time frame. So let's do this. <laughs> this this subject makes me laugh. It is so funny. And it is incredible that you actually have young men who have been brainwashed to believe this nonsense. And the nonsense that I'm speaking of, this foolishness, which don't make any sense, is this crap that for the reason why the black community is in the horror condition that it is in is because for the last 40 years the black woman has taken control of the black community and because of her immorality now we suffer. Prior to 40 years then I guess we were living in righteousness and prosperity. This statement alone doesn't make sense and is ludicrous. But such is expected from young black men who have been indoctrinated into a European society whereas the female is made inferior, the female is oppressed, the female is made an enemy, the female as seen only as something to use by men. Now, these who would be idiots, these who would be ignorant, they will come to somebody like me who is in my right state of mind and bring this nonsense to me. So I respond with the following the black woman they say has been in power in the black community for 40 years the black man and woman we who are the descendants of slaves in America we have been in America for at least close to 400 years so let us just say 400 years the black woman has only been in power, as you say, for the last 40 years. Now, that leaves us 360 years. And you say, before the black woman came into power, the white man ruled for 360 years. Now, you tell me. So what was black men doing? And if the black man is so strong, if the black man is a protector and defender of the black woman, if he is supposed to be the quote unquote leader, how is it possible out of the whole 400 years that black folks have been in existence in this country, how is it possible that the black woman has come into some type of power and control over the black community but this black man who is supposed to be the soldier the warrior the strength the leader has never had any kind of power so you mean to tell me that the black man is so sissified that he has never had power over his own community that the black woman who y'all say is weak, who you say is emotional, who you say is all messed up immoral, she rises to power within the last 40 years and the black man has never had power because he failed to challenge the white man to get anything. But the black woman is strong and brave enough that she challenged whatever force there may have been in the way and within the last 40 years she came into power and she made things worse. That don't even make any sense. Then you ask these bozos to prove that the black woman has
has been in any kind of power within the last 40 years? Who are the who are the leaders? Who are the, who are these female leaders that's in power in our communities that y'all talking about? Do they control the church? Do they control the educational system? What do they control in the black community except control the population by having babies and these babies are not supported by their male fathers. What you're talking about don't make any sense. So what you're, what you're basically saying is the black man is a sissy. He was a pup to the white man and now he's a pup to black women. Oh, black woman, I'm a leader. The Bible says so. The Bible says so. Would you let me, you need to let me take my place as a leader. If the white man didn't give you no play, why should the black woman pop down to your sissified ass and give you some play if that's the case? You are the one that should be wearing tampons. You don't have to ask no white man for nothing. You don't have to ask no black woman for nothing. If you're a spirit, if you're a warrior, if you're a soldier that you claim you be, then take your place, whether they like it or not. But y'all a bunch of sissies. And since you're scared of this oppressor, then you think it's easy to jump on black women and these black women show your punk, sissified ass that it's not easy. She'll fight you back. You can't fight the oppressor. I'll be damned if you come up in my house after I work, you ain't gave me nothing. You ain't paying for no babies. You're not providing no protection for me. You're not doing anything. And you think I'm supposed to respect you. You ain't earned. You ain't earned no damn respect. You don't get a college degree until you earn it. You don't get a promotion at a job until you earn it. But your Bible or your Quran or whatever your religion talk about, oh, the man supposed to leave. You leave when you earn it and you deserve it. Sit your punk, sissified, bugger ass down. I don't respect you. The reason why the black woman in America is the way she is because we as black men have failed to protect her, failed to secure her. So, why should she bow down to you when you bow down to the white man? She can bow down to the white man and get her own stuff and cut out the middle man, which is your begging ass. The black woman is the leader of the community. Under religion, and most of these sisters are religious, they will bow down to this weak, pathetic man because her Bible tell her the man is the head of the household regardless of how pitiful he is. And that's where she make a mistake. You want to get on black women's case because they raise our children. Where your ass at? Where are the men at? You can take you can take your place and teach your sons how to be a man. But you want to know something? You don't know what that is. I have seen in households with so-called quote-unquote men in the house. And the young boys grow up just as scissified as anybody else. Because it's a man in the house, but you weak and you incompetent. The white man still rule over your sissy ass. You have become loyal to his religious teaching that he forced on your ancestors. You talk about you talk about black women like she's some animal, she's some kind of inferior, some kind of thing. And you learn how to hate black women, your sisters, your mother, your nieces because you have grown up in this Europeanized society and I don't give a damn how black you claim you are. 
You can't be African. You can't be black like you claim you are and you put down your black woman for no whatever reason. I don't care what she is because your sissified ass, you ain't no better. If the black woman is immoral, your ass is immoral. Who are the drug dealers in the community? Black men. Who are the main ones killing black people in the community? Black men. Who the dope things? Black men. Who the drugs? Black men. Who the one not taking care of their children and abandoning their babies? It's the black men. Don't bring me your garbage about the black woman in power. She in power doing what? When you look at black leadership, how many black women, how many female names pop up? Y'all always talk about Malcolm and Elijah Muhammad. Jesse Jackson or, or Al Sharpton. How many black women names pop up? Very few. Because the black woman not running nothing. She's dumb enough to let y'all weak, pathetic ass bugs lead her. She needs to take advantage and control for real. She needs to come into power and leave y'all sorry for ass at home playing Atari video games with your pants sagging or with your degree falling to and kissing Jesus' ass Muhammad's ass you have nothing you have, you have no manhood of your own without some kind of God without some kind of Jesus or Muhammad or some something to worship you don't have no kind of power at all you pathetic so the woman because the black man in America has failed to stand up and be what he claimed he is she had to learn how to be independent and she should be proud and your nappy head ass you mad because she don't need you because you pathetic I don't need nobody and beg nobody will you let me be the leader will you let me control this just take it and see your woman when she see you stand strong she'll step to the side and she don't mind you doing your duty but you just want her to be a sophisticated beggar while you begging the white man and you want, while you honor the white man, you think she's supposed to sit around and honor your ass and you ain't doing nothing. The white man gave his woman a country. What have you gave the black woman except a damn STD, gonorrhea and syphilis? You ain't gave this woman nothing. The least you can do is give her respect for hanging with us in our pathetic, pitiful condition for all these hundreds of years. And now you turn around and you want to make mockery of her. All women have been oppressed. The reason why the white woman is the way she is because she has lived under the oppression of her man. And so the black woman and the white woman have found common ground. And that's why the black woman caught up in the white woman's nonsense because the white woman don't give a damn about you black woman with your attitude. Your black man has been destroyed. He's a pitiful creature. And I'm not going to go for that nonsense. You ain't nothing but a sophisticated beggar and the black woman can beg for a damn self. Why should she allow you to get in the way? She can go straight to the source herself. But when you begin to fight for her, take care of your children, and build your community, and show, not talk about what kind of man you are, show her. She'll step to the side, I'm telling you, and let you do your duty, because she do it all the time. She do it in religion all the time. She wants you to lead. She wants you to be the leader. But you refuse to do it, because you're sissy, scared of the white man, woman beaters. Huh. Child beaters, pedophiles. Jump down your comment. <laughs> Peace forever and always.
coming to y'all just a little informal. I only have 15 minutes. I'm going to try to squeeze what I need to say very quickly in this allotted time period. So please uh, bear with me and try to keep up because I got to go through this pretty quick. And here we go. <laughs> Black Power family. Assalamu alaikum. Ashe Hotel. You hear these words all the time from black men and sometimes black women, but we're going to talk about black men because black men or the male should be the defender and the warrior and the soldier of the black community. Am I right or wrong? Are you the man that is the provider of woman? The defender of your woman and your children. The defender of the community or the nation. Okay. And it is wonderful that many black men would stand up and have awakened to uh, the knowledge and are attempting and trying to stand up and be a warrior and a soldier. Now, they do a better job when they go into the white man's army because the white man's army puts you in an environment that uh, makes you have no choice but to accept your role as a warrior and a soldier. But when you claim and when you pretend to be a warrior and a soldier in regular environment, then you become an ineffective warrior and an ineffective soldier and I will explain that in just a second. What brings me to this talk is that you have brothers that's talking about black power. We are in war family. We are under threat family. You have brothers that's talking about how bad the black community is. That means the black community is in a poor condition. Sad condition. It is in a environment of extreme danger. It is under threat. It is under siege. So it is understood by the black male that they want to be a soldier and a warrior to fight against the threat and those things which bring harm to the black woman, the children, our community, and hopefully one day our nation. This is wonderful. But at the same time, I look at these individuals, black power, kill the white man, kill the cracker, and they so fill up with talk, with talk about being a soldier. They want to look like warriors. They want to sound like warriors. But they are not warriors. They are frauds. And I'm going to tell you why they are frauds. Because they are having babies and having families. Now this is controversial. Actually it's not controversial, it's reality. But for those who want to justify their actions, then it's controversial and you don't want to hear it. A soldier, listen to me, especially the black man claiming to be a warrior, you don't have time to run around and make babies. You don't have time to run around here and get caught up in love. Oh brother, come on now. It's natural for a man to love a woman. It's natural for a woman to love a man. But your situation is unnatural. And when your situation turns unnatural, then you have to respond accordingly until you bring your situation back to normal, back to nature. The problem that's holding up and is a hindrance to the black community is sex, drugs, and alcohol. And you want to have a family. You do not see in nature animals reproducing when the condition are not right. They will not have any babies at all or they will limit their babies very minimal. And when they are under threat by 
my enemy, they don't have no babies at all. They are on the defense. They're not thinking about making no damn love. They're not thinking about having no babies. They are under threat. They need to get this enemy off their back. But here you are. Hotel. Black power. And all these things y'all be hollering. Pretending to be a warrior. Pretending to be a soldier. And you spin out babies. And you run around talk. Run around trying to find love and all this kind of stuff. But yet and still, you claim that you are under threat. You claim that the conditions is poor. That's just like if you are in the boxing ring and somebody's trying to bash your face in on your mind is making love. That's one of the reasons why many say that Mike Tyson lost his championship to Buster Douglas because of his family problems with Robin Gibbons. When a soldier is at war, when a soldier is, in, is on the battlefield, when your community is under threat, you love, you fight for your children and you fight for your wife because of love. But you're not thinking about making love. You're not thinking about those children. You're thinking about getting this damn lion if you are a rabbit off your back. But see, the problem here is the black man, and even though you scream hotel, black power, I say, shalom, all these things, and you out in the street and you look like a warrior, but you still a damn sex addict. You still in your mind, you are a breeder. And so, and not only are you a breeder in your mind, but all around you in this filthy and nasty society, you are surrounded by sex, so it stays there. And as long as a soldier or a warrior, as long as your mind is in the gutter, you cannot be an effective fighter. You are having babies in conditions that you say you don't like. Why are you bringing babies into an environment you say that is bad for that child? And the resources that you and the time and the effort you use to raise a child, to raise a baby in a hard environment, you could be using those same resources to fight the enemy that's making your world, you said, that makes your world a hellhole. Well, we have to make babies in order to fight the war. Babies can't fight no war. You have enough children. Well, not children. You have enough people. Well, you do have enough children. We have many of our children in the orphanage foster care. You don't need no more babies. You're not taking care of the children that we have. But there are enough adult men, there are enough adult women to fight this war without adding more and bringing children into an environment that y'all say is a threat to us, is bad for us. Even in the animal kingdom, Animals do not reproduce under bad conditions, poor conditions. They damn sure don't reproduce under a threat. Rabbits and deer and all those animals, they know how to control their sexual urges. They know when to mate, they know when not to mate. You, because your mentality, you are a breeder from slavery. That's all the black man was. You was a breeder. You still have that type of mentality to breed no matter what. Because the slave master going to take care of your children. And for most of you, really for all of you, because as long as your money has the white man's face on it, he's the one that's taking care of your ass. And I thought 
you are a warrior and you are a soldier because that's not what you want. You want to build your own nation. You want to spend money with your face on it. But y'all sex addicts. You're porn addicts. I don't give a damn if you married or not. Your priorities is all messed up. You are at war. And all your resources and all that you are should be going into winning that war. You claim that you study history. I just watched an autobiography of the warrior Shaka Zulu. He was a warrior. His mind was not. His mind was not. Uh, there was the obsessed with jumping between some woman's legs because he's a warrior. If you are a warrior, if you are a soldier, your top priority is defending your woman, defending the nation, defending your children, building your community. But because y'all are breeders, y'all are soldier, warrior, wannabes. That's why you can't mess with me. Because I'm going to expose you for the fakes that you are. Sex addicts, porn fiends, and I'm very sure many of y'all drink alcohol, many of y'all smoke some weed, do a little drugs. Don't bring that fakeness to me. So if you're going to be a warrior, and you, you're going to stand up, that's why our conditions have not changed. And a warrior and a soldier develops competent generals. You don't have competent generals. You don't have competent leadership. So at this time, it's good that y'all had a mentality. But when the real leadership begins to emerge, you will see the difference. And instead of saying, I want to be free, by any means necessary, like Malcolm said, you will be free. And you will become and get free once you begin to think like a real soldier, a real warrior, somebody that wants to be free instead of you are comfortable living in your present society with your wife and your children. So continue to complain about your neighborhood waiting on the damn police. Keep complaining about what's going on waiting for the real soldier, the real warriors to show up. Keep having your babies and bringing your babies into this environment so your child can be a slave just like your ass. Because that's all you are. I don't care how many bean pies you sell. I don't care how many DVDs on the street you sell. You bringing these children into an environment that guarantees them to be a slave and get caught up in freakish and nasty behavior. They grow up not to be on your side, but they side with the enemy because you did not bear them in the proper environment because you weren't a soldier you a soldier and you a warrior wannabe. So the enemy has a chance to manipulate and form your child. So what's the sense of having all these children when you cannot control the environment so they will have a good shot at being what you want them to be instead of them being formed by the oppressor, being all they can be, and they end up in the white man's army. Stop being silly and be a true warrior and let us get this to going and get this beast off our back once and for all. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. We got to take this serious and stop being unnatural and look at this in its real sense. Thank you for listening. Drop down your comments. I know maybe you don't like what I had to say, but... It is what it is. Peace out, y'all, and enjoy your Sunday. Black out! <laughs> Peace forever and always. This is your brother, 
the age of Snub Nub 7, and welcome once again to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. Just being a little informal, being a little casual, and uh, hopefully I can make my point within the 15 minute time frame allotted by uh, this particular channel. I want to say that Angel Snub Nub 7 is a loser. And just because you're a loser does not mean you can't be a winner. The only thing wrong with being a loser is that you accept your loss. You stop trying. In order to win, you must lose. Just like a baby trying to learn how to walk. When the baby first begins to stand, the baby falls. The baby crawls. The baby seems like he or she should be able to walk but they continue to tumble. Sometimes it takes so long for some people to learn how to walk. It seems as though they may never. But as long as the infant, as long as that child, even though they lose, even though he or she lose, as long as they don't lose the will to keep trying, then eventually they will become a winner. So when you call Angel Snap Nup 7 a loser, a failure, that does not bother me because I have not lost the will to win. And in reference to that popular uh, rap song by uh, DJ Khaled, of which I love, all I can do is win and that's what I intend to do living or dead when I was a basketball player in fact I'm still a basketball player and I consider myself a pretty good basketball player many people would not choose me or their team and the reason why they would not choose me on that team is because I don't dribble the way you're supposed to, the traditional way. I don't shoot a ball the way you think somebody is supposed to shoot the ball. So since I do not uh, demonstrate basketball skills in, in the manner they believe they should be displayed, then they view me as a loser. Thus, I would not get picked. The object of playing basketball is to take this rubber ball or whatever it's made out of and you score by shooting it off your hand through this ring or this hoop. When I taught myself how to put that basketball through a hoop, I learned by playing with a tennis ball. Of course a tennis ball is not a basketball, but when I was growing up, I was not given a basketball. And I made do with what I had, which was a tennis ball and coffee cans. I would cut the bottom out of the coffee cans and place them on not a straight tree, but a tree that was all crooked. I would take the tennis ball and shoot the tennis ball like it was a basketball into the coffee can I called a rim or a hoop. And pretty soon, I was very, very good 
at taking this little bass, I mean, this little tennis ball and shooting it through the coffee cans. I could, I could even throw hook shots. So I was saying to myself, if I can shoot this tennis ball through, the, through this coffee can, I wonder what I could do with a real basketball and a real rim. So eventually I graduated to the uh, basketball goal, to the basketball where they play basketball. And it was a little awkward because the basketball is 10 times or more bigger than a tennis ball, but a basketball rim is much bigger than a coffee can. So after readjusting my shot, people were amazed, even though my shot looked funny. I was very accurate at shooting or placing that basketball through that hoop. And then, because of practice and practice and practice, I was unorthodox. I dribbled, I trained one side of uh, my right hand to dribble the ball so tough it looked like I was dribbling or could dribble with my left and right hand and my left hand was weaker but I depended more on my right so they thought because I basically would dribble with my right hand I was weak they just didn't know and so this person that is unorthodox, this person that look odd, this person that looked like a loser. I would go on the basketball court because I was different. Ah, Y'all got to understand this, because I was different. I became a winner. I would beat these guys back to back. They would get angry because no matter how hard they tried, they could not beat me. They could not win. And so, what I want to say in a nutshell is that the rejection of my ideology, of my philosophy, the rejection of my wisdom does not bother me. The people that come and challenge, test, make mockery, try to degrade, attack my character, all these things do not bother me because that's what you go through when you are a winner. Or when they know or can see that you are a winner. They, it's a mind game. They want you to believe that you are a loser. People are afraid of change. They are afraid of new ideas. You voted for Barack Obama and the masses of America screamed change. But they really didn't want change. They wanted business as usual, but they wanted just to be made comfortable. They did not want change because change is to bring something different. Are you living different in America? Are you doing anything different in America? The only thing you wanted was to become comfortable because now you're suffering. You do not want change. Barack Obama is doing the exact same thing that all other American presidents have done prior to him. He's a murderer, a liar, a deceiver, just like those prior to him. They don't want change. Black conscience Afrocentricity, black power, African supremacy, all these things, all these names that y'all come up with, all of them have been used in the past. All of them, all these ideologies, your spiritual energy, all these things that y'all talk about, they have yet to make you a winner. You are a loser because you don't want change. Those who were in the beginning driving cars,
They were made mockery by those who were still riding horses. Because those who continued to ride horses, they could not accept change. They could not accept new ideas, new strategy. But now in 2011, you may get a horse for recreational purposes, but you don't want to use a horse to get around with. Black power, black revolution, black struggle needs new strategy, new ideas. And until you do that, the only thing you're going to do is continue to be the white man's bitch. And what make you a bitch is you only thing you do is sit back and complain and holler and scream, kill the cracker. And the white man, the devil do this. And the reason why you complain is because you can't change your condition because your strategy, your idea, your philosophy that has shown you can't work. You hold on to it. You should be driving a car, but you're on the back of a camel. In fact, many of y'all want to spend your hard-earned money to go visit the pyramid so you can ride a damn camel. I can wait for my reward. I can wait for my success, living or dead, because sooner or later, your old idea, your old strategy, your old thought is going to run out and leave you high and dry so you have no choice but to look for new ideas, new strategy. I'm not that much of a loser because this ministry has six strong channels, hundreds of subscriptions. I have one hour lectures that gain views better than the 15 minute videos. So that should tell you something that the people are tired of riding horseback. They are tired of going to the outhouse when they should have indoor plumbing. People with new ideas, people with new strategy are seen as crazy. But your money, your education, your religion, and all the things that y'all hold on to. Look at the world that you live in. What has it done? What it has done is make you say, I want to change. It has brought 100% dissatisfaction from the masses of the people in America and around the world. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, with 50% dissatisfaction becomes, the result is 50% change. 75% dissatisfaction, you will get 75% change. Now you're living at a time where everybody, unless they benefit from the uh, activity of the wicked, 100% change. So change is a coming. Change is a coming. And you're going to have to just deal with it and accept new strategy. It's not going to work. It is proven. It worked back then. It don't anymore. You need to accept thinking for yourself. You need to think outside of these boxes so that these strategies can come forth. The answer to your prayers is not just in some God. If God don't want you or cause you to use your brain, then you don't need that type of God. What do you think you have a brain for? So you can think. And that's what makes me different. That's what makes me look odd. That's what makes me look like a loser. But who's the real loser? I shed tears for you. Because y'all still slaves. And you're happy to be that way. But the changes are coming. I'm happy to be a loser. Because a loser demonstrates winning. Jack Donnie coming, let's talk about it.